How bad a job do you think ChatGPT would be to use to calculate the axial pile capacity for, say, a pipe pile in clay? I decided to find out. So I started by saying, what are some of the methods that you would use to calculate the axial pile capacity of a closed in the pipe pile in clay? So it goes through the calculation for end bearing and skin friction. And you can see they're using the alpha method for skin friction. And of course, total capacity is the sum of the end bearing and the side resistance. And they list various methodologies, American Petroleum Institute, Ashto, Nordic Pile Deep Foundation recommendations, that doesn't sound right. Methods based on pile load tests and empirical correlations. So I said, okay, considering the above and for educational purposes, calculate the axial capacity for a pipe pile with the following configuration. So again, 20 inch diameter pipe pile, one half inch wall thickness, cruciform driving tip, pile cutoff elevations 851, ground elevations 845, it's going to be driven in a stiff clay with an average SPT blow count of 10, so it's just barely into the stiff clay range. And that layer extends to elevation 774. Below elevation 774 is a clay very stiff at 17 blows per foot. And I mentioned that the pile plant tip elevation is elevation 783. So I had to go through and do these calculations. And one of the things I noticed right off the bat is it included the side friction capacity for both layers, even though the pile was tipping above that second clay layer. So it made no sense to include the capacity of that second layer, which you can see here. Also, they didn't get the units right. So for the alpha method, you have alpha factor, which is typically 0.55, times the cohesion value, times the perimeter and length of the pile. So the surface area, the exterior of the pile, times the cohesion value, times 0.55. So they got their units wrong. I mean, for a stiff clay, you'd be looking at a cohesion of about one KSF. As a result, not only did they include the layer that the pile wasn't going to penetrate, but they come up with 2,400 kips, which is impossible. It's complete nonsense. If you just simply use the alpha method and calculate side friction for a pile with that embedment, around 60 feet, you're going to get around 180 kips and then another 20 for end bearing. And it turns out that's very close to what we got on initial drive testing when we did the PDA. So I give ChatGPT another crack at this. I said you made a mistake, or I said you made a mistake. The plant pile tip elevation is 783, 68 foot long pile total, 63 feet of embedment roughly, 60, 62 feet of embedment. It's above the very stiff clay layer, so you shouldn't be including that in the contribution to side friction. Says, you're right, I apologize. And it proceeds to get the units wrong again for the calculation of side friction. So I point that out. And they still are coming up with about 1800 kips capacity, which is impossible. So ChatGPT did a pretty lousy job. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone use ChatGPT. The interesting thing is as you probably heard, it can give you completely erroneous answers. So I think where this is headed is that, you know, you hear about these new job titles as prompt engineer for ChatGPT and other AI tools. The idea is that you have to be able to concisely state the problem. You have to be able to formulate rebuttals to drill down on what the response is. And you need to be able to point out errors, so you have to be experienced. You have to understand whether the answer is reasonable or not. Uh, were there unit error mistakes? Were there conceptual mistakes, like including a layer that the pile wouldn't penetrate in the side friction capacity? So I thought this would be kind of an interesting exercise. I was a little shocked that the program did this poorly. There's other videos I have coming up where I use other geotechnical design examples to see how well ChatGPT does. 
But uh, if you have any questions or comments on that, please let me know in the, in the comment section. And please be sure to hit those like, subscribe, and notification buttons. I'll be publishing at least one new video each week on the subject of deep foundation testing and overall geotechnical issues. So thanks for watching everyone and please stay tuned for future videos.